Way back in episode 7, we talked about arrays. Arrays, while useful, aren't the only way to store and manipulate information. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing array lists and dictionaries. But before we get into those, let's begin by reviewing arrays. Arrays are basically lists of values that are stored together. However, do not confuse arrays with lists. Although they are similar, they have certain differences that make them unique, which we will get into in the next section. When you initialize an array, you give it a size, and this size is fixed. You won't be able to increase the size of the array, so make sure the size is accurate to the number of values you will be storing in the array. To access the values in an array, you reference them using a zero index. This means that the first item is not at position 1, it is at position 0. So, to find the nth item in an array, you will write array n minus 1. However, as the size of an array is fixed, make sure not to reference a position that is beyond the total size of the array, or append too many items to it, as this will return an error. However, you don't have to set the values of the array manually. After initializing the array and giving it a size, a common function of an array is to store multiple values that are returned from a function within a for loop. What I mean is that you can run a for loop that, say, begins with the number 5 and multiplies by 5 each time through the for loop, or maybe runs a coin flip function that returns heads or tails randomly each time, and you can use an array to store each of these values for use later. Anytime you want to perform some operation or function multiple times in a loop, an array can be used to keep track of all the values that are returned. What we've talked about so far is what we call a one-dimensional array, where at each index there is one value. However, arrays can be multi-dimensional. An array containing an array at each of its indexes is a two-dimensional array, or you can have an array containing arrays, containing arrays, containing arrays, containing arrays, depending on what you're trying to do. Multidimensional arrays can be useful in more advanced programs for organizing a wide volume of related values. If that's confusing at all, check out episode 7 for a more in-depth description. Now let's go over array lists. Array lists, or just lists in Python, can be thought of as growing arrays. Earlier, I mentioned how you have to be careful to set an appropriate size of your array and make sure to only reference and append values such that you will remain within the size of the array. However, with array lists, this isn't a problem. After you initialize your array list with a size, if you decide to append values such that their indexes are beyond the size of the array, an array list will grow itself, which means that the computer will allocate more memory to the array to increase its total size so that the new values can be appended. This is quite useful when you don't know the exact number of values that the array will need to store or you want the ability to store values to your heart's content. Finally, let's discuss dictionaries. Dictionaries are much like arrays in that they store multiple values. However, their values are indexed slightly differently. Rather than being referenced by their position within the dictionary, each value is tied to another value that is used to reference it, or its key. Because of this, we say that each position in a dictionary holds a key value pair. In this way, a dictionary can be thought of as one form of a two-dimensional array, as you can consider the key value pair each position to be an array of size 2. However, like arrays, you can store a dictionary inside of a dictionary, creating nested dictionaries or arrays inside of dictionaries, which can make things pretty complicated. When referencing a value in a dictionary, you will use its unique key, and the dictionary will tell you the value that is tied to it. Keep in mind that each key must be unique, as reusing a key in a dictionary will result in error being thrown, because it is impossible for the dictionary to keep track of key value pairs when multiple keys are the same. However, you can store the same value in multiple key value pairs. Dictionaries can be easier to organize than arrays as everything is set up in a more logical manner. That is to say, it is easier to find the value you are looking for when you are using keys rather than simply referencing their positions. To explain what I mean, imagine you have a dictionary of prices at a store. Maybe apples cost $2, milk costs $3, and bread costs $1. You can see that in the dictionary each key is the name of a product and each value corresponds to the price of each product. So, to find the price of bread, you would simply call the dictionary using the key bread, and the dictionary would return the value 1. You can also manipulate dictionaries in many of the same ways you can manipulate arrays and array lists. You can iterate through a dictionary and perform many operations and comparisons on the values. If you want the product with the highest price, for example, you can iterate through the dictionary to find the value that is the highest. Now, if you're using a one-dimensional array, the only option would be for the computer to either return the highest value or its index, that being 3 in this case. However, with a dictionary, you would be able to return either the key or the value. This means that, instead of a dictionary returning the value of the highest price, it could instead take the product with the highest price, and thus return milk. Arrays, array lists, and dictionaries are all useful in their own right, and boast certain advantages over one another. However, 
in this episode, we did not have enough time to go into too much detail on the many uses for each of these. Next episode, we are going to be talking about the uses for arrays and array lists, so make sure to check that out for more information. If you enjoyed this episode, or you're just feeling like you don't have enough subscriptions already, subscribe down below. We would greatly appreciate it. If you have no idea what we were talking about in this episode, or you just need a refresher on some programming concepts, check out the playlist to the right for the rest of the series. Thanks for watching.